Before I started sewing, I wondered if I needed a mannequin to get started, and I've realized that that's a yes and a no answer. I'm Tammy, and welcome back to my channel, and in today's video, I'm gonna go through these two mannequins that I have right here, and share why they're useful, what I would personally look out for when you're buying one, and which one of these I prefer over the other. So do you need a mannequin to get started sewing? Absolutely not, but they are very useful in so many circumstances when you are going through your sewing process. When you first start sewing, Sewing, obviously the main goal of making clothes yourself is to make sure they fit you really well and at the end of the day obviously putting clothes on your own body is going to be the best way to figure out how it fits on you but using a mannequin can be a really useful tool in figuring out what the overall fit is like. So this mannequin to my right is an old mannequin that I bought maybe three years ago and then this one is one that I bought recently. Now to someone that hasn't bought a mannequin before or used one they probably look very similar to each other but there are some really key differences that make one better than the other in my opinion. When shopping for a mannequin in general, you wanna look out for a few key things and this is just gonna help you figure out what you personally want in a mannequin. I feel like the most important thing when it comes to shopping for a mannequin is making sure that it's pinnable. So what I mean by that is I basically have a bunch of these pins and I use them for closing seams together but also when you're working on a mannequin, you're gonna to wanna to pin fabric to the mannequin itself. So if I just get a piece of fabric, I'll show you what I mean. If I just place some fabric over the mannequin you can see that I can pin the fabric to the mannequin and it will stay in place. That's really important when you're shopping for a mannequin because if it's not a pinnable piece, you won't be able to drape on it as you would like and also you'll have to have finished garments on it instead of actually working with it for the fitting process. Both of these mannequins are made out of fabric. So if I touch this one, it has definitely a bit more of a rougher texture and then this one has a more smoother appearance and a smoother texture on the skin. When shopping for a mannequin, you'll also want to make sure you find one that has a similar body shape and size that your body has. The whole purpose, in my opinion, of using a mannequin is to help you get better fitting garments. And if the mannequin doesn't really reflect what your body looks like, it's gonna be really hard to use it in that way. The main key difference between these two mannequins right here is the fact that one is adjustable in size and one is just one size only. So when you're shopping for a mannequin, you can either find one that has these toggles that you're actually able to expand and decrease the size of the mannequin at the key points, so at the bust, the waist and the hips. Whereas this one, you have to pick one size and that's what gets delivered to you. Obviously, lots of mannequin shots will have a range of sizes for you to choose from. This is a size 10 and I actually find the bust a tiny bit too big, but I found the waist and the hips fit me really perfectly. You also want to figure out if you want a mannequin that's adjustable by height. So both of these actually go up and down so I can tailor how high the mannequin sits if I'm making a floor length garment, for example. From looking at these mannequins, you can also tell they're both just the torso, so there isn't any shoulders, but this one does actually come with an attachable shoulder, so you can literally clip it on. And now I have an arm to help me adjust when I'm sewing sleeves and anything to do with the arm. Accessories like that really aren't necessary when you're first starting out. It's more if you wanna start elevating what you're fitting and making sure it fits the entire body. So from the get-go, I'm just gonna let you know that I definitely prefer this mannequin over here and I'm gonna tell you why that is. The main issue I have with this mannequin over here is that first of all, I bought it three years ago and it was very cheap. And you can really tell that with the construction of how this is made. It's quite quite wobbly as you can see and obviously because it's adjustable there's gaps all the way around the entire mannequin. I do have to say this is also broken which is why I bought a new one so the back of this is actually pulling out when it shouldn't be doing that. In theory having gaps on the mannequin is obviously a really great idea to be able to expand different sizes but in reality when you're trying to pin fabric on this mannequin it gets stuck in the gaps it's really awkward to have like a flat seam and honestly that was the main reason why I upgraded to a mannequin that is completely smooth and doesn't have any gaps because it'll be much easier when actually trying to fit garments. The other reason why I'm not a huge fan of this type of mannequin and something to look out for when you are shopping for mannequins, especially when they're in the cheaper ranges, is I found that they make the bust a really odd shape and proportion. This bust is actually really pointy and also the torso is really long. Like that doesn't reflect how my personal body is like. And it's just something I've noticed when I look at mannequins, for some reasons they make the bust really pointy and it doesn't really reflect a natural chest. 
Now let me show you why I love this mannequin because it is so much easier to pin on. I love the way it feels. But the main difference that I really like on this mannequin is that this one has style lines all the way down the actual shape of the body. So it's got princess seams that run all the way down from the bust to the waist. It's got a center seam. It's even got like a bust curve under the bust. It's also got a waist curve. Having style lines on a mannequin is so much easier when it comes to draping because it gives you something to work with. I know some people use that black tape and put that on to replicate that, but having it actually in the dress form is honestly so much easier. And then even on a personal note, I actually prefer the way this one looks also because of the color of it. So this is like an off-white creamy shade and it just looks more expensive for some reason. I like the way it feels. I like the fabric they've used. It just feels a bit more high-end. This one also comes with wheels so I can move it around, which is so, so useful. This one actually only has like wooden things and obviously it's not very movable. Kind of have to leave it in one place. From the top of my head, I think this mannequin was around 400 pounds and this mannequin was maybe around 100 to 150 pounds so there's a big difference and obviously mannequins price points can go really high professional dress forms can actually go up into the thousands but I was thinking that is something I can invest in if I get a lot of use out of this one in particular because I didn't want to make such a big investment without knowing if I'm going to use this on a daily basis so that's my personal opinion on these two mannequins and why I prefer this one over that one not only will it help you when you're fitting your garments I also just like mannequins as like a way of motivation. Sometimes if I'm working on a project, I'll actually put it on the mannequin. And then every time I walk into the room, I'll see my sewing project on the mannequin. And it just gives me a bit of motivation and like a boost to get sewing. And it means your garments aren't just thrown onto your table. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful if you're looking to buy a mannequin. I'll leave a link down below on where I bought these two mannequins particularly. Again, they're not 100% necessary, but I do personally find them very useful when it comes to sewing. I actually put a question up on my Instagram the other day on what I should name my new mannequin because I'm so bad when it comes to naming things. I don't know what to call her. If you have a name or a suggestion of what you named your mannequin, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.